Viewer discretion advised. Please be advised that this video includes translations of historical speeches or works, recreated using advanced AI tools to replicate the original voices and styles. These reproductions may contain controversial, sensitive, or outdated viewpoints and language. The content is presented in its historical context and does not reflect the views or values of this channel. Viewer discretion is advised, particularly for younger audiences. Du, meine Arbeit für richtig hältst, ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin. In connection with the Jewish question, I have this to say. It is a shameful spectacle to see how the whole democratic world is oozing sympathy for the poor, tormented Jewish people, but remains hard-hearted and obdurate when it comes to helping them, which is surely, in view of its attitude, an obvious duty. The arguments that are brought up as an excuse for not helping them actually speak for us Germans and Italians, for this is what they say. One, we, that is the democracies, are not in a position to take in the Jews. Yet in these empires, there are not 10 people to the square kilometer, while Germany, with her 135 inhabitants to the square kilometer, is supposed to have room for them. Two, they assure us we cannot take them unless Germany is prepared to allow them a certain amount of capital to bring with them as immigrants. For hundreds of years, Germany was good enough to receive these elements, although they possessed nothing except infectious political and physical diseases. What they possess today, they have by a very large extent gained at the cost of the less astute German nation by the most reprehensible manipulations. Today, we are merely paying this people what it deserves. When the German nation was, thanks to the inflation instigated and carried through by Jews, deprived of the entire savings which it had accumulated in years of honest work, when the rest of the world took away the German nation's foreign investments, when we were divested of the whole of our colonial possessions, these philanthropic considerations evidently carried little noticeable weight with democratic statesmen. Today I can only assure these gentlemen that thanks to the brutal education with which the democracies favored us for 15 years, we are completely hardened to all attacks of sentiment. After more than 800,000 children of the nation had died of hunger and undernourishment at the close of the war, we witnessed almost one million head of milking cows being driven away from us in accordance with the cruel paragraphs of a dictate which the humane democratic apostles of the world forced upon us as a peace treaty. We witnessed over one million German prisoners of war being retained in confinement for no reason at all for a whole year after the war was ended. We witnessed over one and a half million Germans being torn away from all that they possessed in the territories lying on our frontiers and being whipped out with practically only what they wore on their backs. We had to endure having millions of our fellow countrymen torn from us without their consent and without their being afforded the slightest possibility of existence. I could supplement these examples with dozens of the most cruel kind. For this reason, we asked to be spared all sentimental talk. The German nation does not wish its interests to be determined and controlled by any foreign nation, France to the French, England to the English, America to the Americans, and Germany to the Germans. We are resolved to prevent the settlement in our country of a strange people which was capable of snatching for itself all the leading positions in the land and to oust it, for it is our will to educate our own nation for these leading positions we have hundreds of thousands of very intelligent children of peasants and of the working classes. We shall have them educated. In fact, we have already begun, and we wish that one day they, and not the representatives of an alien race, may hold the leading positions in the state together with our educated classes. Above all, German culture, as its name alone shows, is German and not Jewish, and therefore its management and care will be entrusted to members of our own nation, if the rest of the world cries out with a hypocritical mean against this barbaric expulsion from Germany of such an irreplaceable and culturally eminently valuable element, we can only be astonished at the conclusions they draw from this situation. But how thankful they must be that we are releasing these precious apostles of culture and placing them at the disposal of the rest of the world. In accordance with their own declarations, they cannot find a single reason to excuse themselves for refusing to receive this most valuable race in their own countries. Nor can I see a reason why the members of this race should be imposed upon the German nation, while in the states, which are so enthusiastic about these splendid people, 
Their settlement should suddenly be refused with every imaginable excuse. I think that the sooner this problem is solved, the better, for Europe cannot settle down until the Jewish question is cleared up. It may very well be possible that sooner or later an agreement on this problem may be reached in Europe even between those nations which otherwise do not so easily come together. The world has sufficient space for settlements, but we must once and for all get rid of the opinion that the Jewish race was only created by God for the purpose of being in a certain percentage a parasite living on the body and the productive work of other nations. The Jewish race will have to adapt itself to sound constructive activity as other nations do, or sooner or later it will succumb to a crisis of an inconceivable magnitude. One thing I should like to say on this day, which may be memorable for others as well as for us Germans, in the course of my life, I have very often been a prophet and have usually been ridiculed for it. During the time of my struggle for power, it was in the first instance the Jewish race which only received my prophecies with laughter when I said that I would one day take over the leadership of the state and with it that of the whole nation and that I would then, among many other things, settle the Jewish problem. Their laughter was uproarious, but I think that for some time now they have been laughing on the other side of their face. Today I will once more be a prophet. If the international Jewish financiers in and outside Europe should succeed in plunging the nations once more into a world war, then the result will not be the Bolshevization of the earth and thus the victory of Jewry, but the annihilation of the Jewish race in Europe. The nations are no longer willing to die on the battlefield so that this unstable international race may profiteer from a war or satisfy its Old Testament vengeance. The Jewish watchword, workers of the world unite, will be conquered by a higher realization, namely, workers of all classes and of all nations, recognize your common enemy. If you have suggestions for other historical speeches or works you'd like to see recreated, Please leave a comment below with your recommendations. Your input is invaluable in shaping our content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more unique and thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching and being part of our community.